and this is such a trippy place. So this uh, is a really old wildfire. I can't remember the name of it, but it's a pretty famous Colorado wildfire, and it burned the entire first half of the forest. What do you think, buddy? Are you ready? Are you ready, my man? We are headed out to our first camping trip of the season. We're gonna jet out to Lost Creek Wilderness. There's some easy car camping right there, and uh, it's one of my favorite spots to go early in the season. It seems to dry up before anything else, so I'm really excited. And this will be Shiloh's first camping trip, so you're pretty jacked, aren't you, buddy? Oh, yes. This is such a trippy place. So this uh, is a really old wildfire. I can't remember the name of it, but it's a pretty famous Colorado wildfire. And it burned the entire first half of the forest. I think it's been like 30 years or something. So the entrance up to this place uh, for quite a while <clears throat> is just all burned down. It's crazy. Let's pull over to the side and let this guy go by. So there's kind of more people out here than last uh, last time I was here, which was probably a couple years ago. So I took a right at the fork in the road, and I remember coming and exploring this, this section a long time ago. It's a little bit more nestled, and there's more woods. So I figure, let's try something new, you know? Uh, the, the road I was gonna go down, I believe it's more accessible for RVs and campers. And this one, it depends on how far you go in, but there is some nooks and crannies and places that kind of will keep the, the mainstream campers out. Um, so right over there to the left is the Goose Creek Trailhead, which is kind of the entrance or one of the entrances from this side <clears throat> to the Lost Creek Wilderness. I really like that area. It's, uh, as you can tell, super dry, super early in the season. Um, of course, if it rains, it does get a little bit muddy, but but really, this is one of the first places you can come and get some serious wilderness backpacking in. Man, this terrain is just so wicked cool. It's creepy and cool. Yeah, so check it out. This entire section of the forest was burned down. Pretty much as far as you can see in this direction. It's sad, but at the same time, as you're driving through, you see the baby growth and the new trees that are coming through. And it's just really, really inspiring because you you can see and you, and you can tell that the earth takes care of itself. And even a disastrous fire like this um, really just rebirths and renews the soil. There's so much dead wood and charred wood, all that ash goes down into the ground and then 20, 30 years later, all the baby trees start sprouting up. Look, you can see right here. So they're all about this size right now. It's incredible how much time it takes for a forest to regenerate itself. Um, you know, like in the grand scheme of things. But it's really, really uplifting. And not to mention, I, I have this idea or concept in my head that when the trees come back after a massive fire like that, I, I bet you their immunity or their tolerance to the environment improves kind of like a second, third generation of anything. I would imagine that the new trees coming up are gonna be more suited for the next two to 300 years, which is a very cool idea. Now we're getting into the pretty part of the forest.
ground cover is really easy to work with. There's all kinds of fire and tinder, or <laughs> fire and tinder, all kinds of tinder for fire. And also it's just a really comforting kind of forest. You can see, uh, oh man, look over here. Yeah, I love that. I just love it. This is gonna be a great camp night. I can't wait. So what we're looking for is a decent site. So all along this road, there's little pull-offs like right here. Some of them are good, um, but I remember from years ago, there's one down here that's nestled up on a big boulder and it's got its own little like cul-de-sac. So we're gonna go all the way in and see if we can find that one. No luck on this road, none whatsoever. I thought it went a lot farther than it did. There's only like 10 decent campsites and they're all scooped up. So unfortunately, we're gonna have to get creative. If I had my bear canister, or a better way to uh, pack in the food I brought, I just, I brought car camping food. I didn't bring backpacking food. Wow, this is no good. It's like, I gotta, I gotta say that I feel the Colorado is getting so freaking full, man. All the places that are within like an hour and a half, two hours drive are just ate up. It's so hard to find camping anywhere, dude. Like, it's why I gravitate and go to the wilderness lands and just go ahead and, and uh, grab a backpack because all these national forest roads that are anywhere close to Denver, they're just so jammed up. Well, we didn't have any luck on that road. I thought there was a lot more campsites, but it turned out to only be about, I don't know, less than 10. They were definitely all taken and there was a bunch of people shooting guns. So we're left to try and find something else. So the, the couple that are available are just sitting here like ditch sites right off the side of the road. Not completely opposed, but I just know there's gonna be a lot of uh, car traffic and that's really annoying. But this has got a nice little, nice little campfire and some woods behind it so Shiloh could run around. So we might stay here, we might find something else. I just know there's gonna be a lot of traffic. You can see these cars coming in and out and around this road. And this is kind of a main access point. So I might uh, continue on and look for something better.